Rajasthan, land of kings. One of the most unique and colorful provinces in northern India, on the border with Pakistan. The barren desert landscape shines out in wonderful splendor. Home of the Rajput that ruled over the land for more than a thousand years. Here, exotic fantasy turns to reality. A journey to a magical land, an Indian thousand and one nights. Our journey begins in Agra. Situated on the border with Rajasthan, this imposing metropolis of the Mughal monarchs is an ideal starting point. Emperor Akbar moved his residence from Delhi to Agra, and the palace city, the Red Fortress, was three generations in construction. A 2.5 kilometer long wall with many bastions surrounds a huge inner courtyard and numerous palace buildings. Artistic stone masonry decorates a number of red sandstone arcades, but most of the buildings are of marble. The ruling monarch and his royal household once held official events in the public audience hall the 70 meter long Diwani Arm. In spite of much destruction and plundering of the buildings, the amazing wealth of the former Mughals is plain to see. Akbar's grandchild, Shah Jahan, added various decorative elements from European palaces to these buildings in order to emphasize his power. But Jahan's son, Aurangzeb, imprisoned his father in the Red Fort until his death and once again moved his royal residence to Delhi. From his prison cell, Shah Jahan was able to stare at the symbol of his eternal love, the Taj Mahal, tomb of his favorite wife, Muntaz Mahal, who died at an early age. The shining white and majestic building, with its large and impressive dome, is the final resting place of the Indian Mughal and his beloved wife. The architecture is full of Persian influence and is perfectly symmetrical. The red wings on each side of the building emphasize the stark white of the mausoleum. The Taj Mahal is a symbol of India and one of the 10 finest buildings in the world. The city on the Jamuna River is full of life. Hustle and bustle are typical within the crowded streets of the former capital of the Mughal realm.
It's like a medieval city with market stalls and tiny workshops, narrow lanes, colourful shops and traditional buildings. The Etimad ud Dullah mausoleum is a jewel of Mughal architecture that the wife of Shah Jahangir's had built for her parents. Her father was a nobleman who had escaped from Persia and who had become a powerful minister in Jahangir's court. Another tomb was also built on the banks of the Jamuna River for Azul Khan, the Chinese grave, Chini Karaza. A splendid octagonal building adorned with ornate tiles in memory of the learned court functionary who originated from Persia. Around 10 kilometers north of Agra, close to Sikandra, is the large tomb of Emperor Akbar, who was one of the wisest Mughal monarchs. He ruled over the Indian Empire for almost half a century and was known to be extremely tolerant of religions other than his own. A wide avenue leads to the five-story mausoleum that is an extraordinary example of Indian Islamic architecture. It has a ground plan that is similar to a Hindu stair pyramid, but the large central portal and adjoining arches are typical Islamic elements. The upper floor with an open-air cenotaph of the monarch is no longer accessible. Only the dark vaults are open to the public. It is believed that the famous Kohinoor diamond was once located on a column in the center of the building in order to reflect the sunlight. In 1691, the tomb was plundered and the bones of the great monarch were burned. Today, the Kohinoor diamond belongs to the British crown. Now it is difficult to perceive what must have been the original splendor of these mausoleums. Thirty-five kilometers southwest of Agra is Fatehpur Sikri, Akbar's capital city. This huge palace was designed only as a residence and without any defences. As should there have been any danger, it was possible to escape to Agra. In 1568, the Sufi saint Salim Chishti predicted the birth of an hereditary prince, an event that he had desired for many years. When the prediction became reality, Akbar named his son Salim 
and moved his residence close to that of the revered holy man, to Sikri. Following a successful campaign and victory over the mighty Sultanate of Gujarat, the city was given the nickname Fatehpur, City of Victory. The large mosque is situated beyond the palace complex, on top of a hill. It was there that the holy man lived in a cave. Within the palace complex, a marble mausoleum was built in his honor. However, problems with the water supply caused the abandonment of the city some 15 years later. So Fatehpur Sikri became a ghost city. Close to Bharatpur is one of the most beautiful nature reserves in Asia. Keoladeo Ghana, where a python welcomes visitors. This huge area can be explored by foot or by bicycle rickshaw. 29 square kilometers of protected nature. But it hasn't always been like this. This huge area was once the hunting ground of the Maharaja, and it is said that it was not uncommon for a thousand birds to be killed in a single day. In 1956, an animal research center was built here that in 1963 led to this area being designated as a national park. The swallow marshes, lakes and swamped babul acacia trees have transformed this landscape into one of the most important bird sanctuaries in the world. Several paths lead through the nature park and it derives its name from an old Shiva temple. Notice boards display the results of former hunting parties. In July and August, countless birds nest here. The breeding season continues until October and November, and around 30,000 young are hatched each year. This is a paradise of nature. A harmonious area inhabited by 370 species of birds such as pelicans, cormorants and heron. Here, bird watchers from all over the world can meet and appreciate the diversity of the bird life all around them a unique landscape and a natural heritage enjoyed by one and all.
In Dieg, 34 kilometers to the north, the monarch of Bharatpur had a summer palace built in the 18th century. One of the most captivating and well-preserved Rajput palaces. In this complex, buildings, water features and gardens unite in perfect harmony. Rajput buildings and Mughal gardens. Along the banks of a small artificial lake, the main buildings of the palace appear and Bengali roofs emphasize the harmony of the architecture. The many water sports that were once enjoyed by the royal court are no longer visible today. As the palace was inhabited by the Maharaja's family right up until 1970, it provides a good insight into the life of India's former nobility. Jaipur, the pink city, in which the buildings consist of the reddish stone of the surrounding landscape. The old city wall almost completely encircles the palace and its surrounding residential and commercial districts. It's broken only by picturesque gateways. Much to the surprise of tourists, the local people continue to use the elephant as a means of transport in this splendid trading town. However, modern traffic with its cars, tuk-tuk taxis and countless bicycles has also found its way into this fairy tale like city. Everything happens on the streets, whether the sale of vegetables or even cooking. And everywhere, diligent hands work on beautiful carpets within shady inner courtyards. Jaipur is closely associated with the name of a young king, Maharaja Jai Singh II, who was crowned when only 12 years of age. The city palace extends across more than five square kilometers of the old town. The seven-story building is still inhabited by the royal family. It is as though time has stood still. The architecture of both the Rajput and the Mughals is united in all its splendor. Jai Singh was said to be a skillful statesman, an architect, soldier and mathematician. Even the Mughal monarchs were impressed by his abilities.
The main landmark of the city, the Palace of the Winds, is solely a facade with vented bay windows from where the women could observe the street unseen. They sat on narrow balustrades and peered through the windows of their golden cage to the people in the streets outside. Jantar Manta is an observatory that the monarch had built next to his palace. Today, it still contains various scientific instruments. Fascinating place with precise but surreal looking objects for the measurement of solar time and the trajectory of the stars, all designed by Jai Singh. On the journey into the surrounding mountain landscape close to the city, an artificial lake suddenly appears, in the center of which is the beautiful Jal Mahal Castle. At the time of the Maharajas, it was common in Rajasthan to build castles within reservoirs. At the time of the Maharajas, it was common in Rajasthan to build castles within reservoirs. Amid the arid, rocky landscape is the original residence of the Rajput clan, the Amber Fort, that is strategically situated within rock walls. Man Singh resided here as a contemporary of the Mughal Emperor Akbar long before his successor founded Jaipur. The castle complex has four large inner courtyards that are located on four levels. The lowest courtyard was once the domain of the palace guards. Across a wide staircase through another gate is an upper courtyard that is dominated by a large audience hall. When the Mughal monarchs heard about this splendid place, its columns were covered with unattractive stucco in order to prevent them showing unhealthy interest. The next courtyard contained a garden with water and much vegetation. In the surrounding rooms lived the wives of the Mughal monarch. But a special feature of the palace is a pavilion that was built above a garden and whose interior walls are decorated with colorful glass. This is where the Maharaja lived with his favorite wives, with adjoining sleeping areas and official rooms and natural ventilation and a spectacular view. This influential principality was ruled from this splendid fortress for more than six centuries. A place of power and beauty. Shekhawati 
is the name of the area along a former caravan route. In this arid yet densely inhabited region, several small principalities gradually developed, each of which was dependent upon Jaipur. Today, most of the palaces have been transformed into splendid hotels. In the 19th century, Sikar was one of the most prosperous trading posts in the region. But little remains of those colorful times. Much of the palace is now in ruins. The wealth of the former businessmen who traded goods between Lahore and Delhi is no longer apparent. Thirty kilometers to the north is Lakshmangar that was founded by Lakshman Singh, the Raja of Sika. He also was keen to exploit the flourishing caravan trade. A palace, temple and numerous splendid buildings indicate the former wealth of this region. Fatehpur is located on a trading route further north and was built in the 15th century. Today, nothing remains of the warlike incidents that once took place here. The British rule of India that began at the outset of the 19th century promoted peaceful trade and brought great wealth to several families. This created the great trading houses of Shekhawati, the Havelis, or the Isolated. They were similar to the Persian caravanserai. A characteristic large inner courtyard is surrounded by a two-story dwelling. It served as a storage room and stable. Its occupants lived above. Artistic wall paintings decorate the rooms of the palace-like Haveles and highlight the amazing success of the former traders. Several of the external walls are covered with frescoes whose motifs originate mainly from Indian mythology and feature a number of important personages. In the late 19th century, European elements were added, such as illustrations of cars, aircraft and angels. But after an increasing number of traders left the region, many villages became ghost towns and the Haveles fell into decay.
In front of the city gates is the desert. Once a British officer described his first view of Ramgar with these enthusiastic words. The first glance of the city beyond the sand dunes transforms all the fantasy of the thousand and one nights into reality, a unique scene. Since that time, many years have passed. But if that same colonial officer were to visit this desert village today, he would see that little has changed. Its unique charm is truly captivating. The small town of Churu is flanked on both its south and west sides by sand dunes. It is believed that it was founded in 1563 by the Jat. It subsequently became important as the supplier of caravans for the Podar family that brought this village a long period of prosperity. Various fine haveres indicate the power and wealth of this region's traders. Among them is a building that contains more than 1,000 windows. Here in this oasis-like village, both man and beast could be cared for prior to their long journey through the endless Tat Desert. Twelve kilometers southeast of Churu is the village of Bissar that was founded by Keshri Singh in 1746 as a small fortified town. When his grandson Shio eventually came to power, he attempted to increase his wealth by imposing severe taxes on the population. So the traders soon abandoned the town. Shio became the leader of an infamous band of robbers that were later defeated by the British. After this, the traders returned. The origins of the city of Junjunu that was named after a Jat monarch are unknown. However, it has an historic past. The center of the city is decorated by several havelas that contain a variety of wall paintings. Although somewhat dilapidated, the palace still has an air of elegance. A ramp leads in a zigzag to various floors. In this way, the monarch was able to ride on his horse up to the roof with ease. Due to its many haveles, Nawalgar was the most profitable destination in the Shikawati. More than 100 traders settled here. Ornate decorations on the external and interior walls, as well as on the precious gates, indicate the artistic flair and wealth of those prosperous times.
The Balakila Fort in the heart of the city is situated next to a crowded marketplace. But the building is not accessible. It is now in private ownership. The fascinating frescoes on the external walls were created by Binja, one of the most famous artists of his time. The town was protected by a fortified wall and provided a safe haven for its traders and a good income for its monarch. The sleepy desert town of Mandawa captures the unique charm of this extraordinary region like no other. Gravel roads and sandy lanes travel past old houses with romantic inner courtyards. It's like walking through a medieval film set. Numerous magnificently decorated havelas flank the tangled lanes of the old town. India's flair and diversity is very much alive here. Due to the construction of a fort here in 1756 by monarch Nawal Singh, this then unimportant desert village was transformed into a fortified town. As with many other towns in the Shekhawati, Mandawa was originally surrounded by a massive city wall, but today little of it remains. In the early 19th century, a number of trader families had their splendid and exquisite homes built here. But at the centre of the city and the main tourist attraction is the fort that has now been transformed into a palatial hotel. The glamour and splendour of bygone times is still omnipresent and the arduous climb up onto the roof is rewarded by a magnificent view across Mandawa. Ajmer India's most important pilgrimage destination for those of the Muslim faith is encircled by bare mountains in a high valley on the banks of an artificial lake. Several historic buildings such as the large gate of Sultan Il Tutmish of Delhi were built in honour of the Persian saint Khwaja Chishti who settled in Ashmir and was later buried here. Fourteen kilometers away is an important Hindu pilgrimage destination, Pushkar, a place deeply rooted in Indian mythology.
The village consists of whitewashed houses and temples located around a lake, the sacred Pushkar Lake. Legend has it that the creator of the universe, Brahma, was once in search of a suitable place of sacrifice when a flower fell from his hand. At the spot where the flower fell onto the ground, a spring opened and created a lake, a veritable oasis in the desert. The lake is now regarded as sacred, surrounded by a white city, amid a stony desert, a place of holy men. Those who travel here can enjoy the tranquility of sunset on the banks of the lake. Jodhpur, the blue city. In bright sunlight, its sandstone buildings shine out in intense blue. On a rock plateau above the city is a large and impregnable fortress with 36 meter high walls the Merengar Forts. Most of the well-preserved palaces and courtyards of the huge mountain castle originated in the 17th century. Although Raj Joda founded the city in 1459, The Mawa monarchs enjoyed the same status as the Maharajas and did their utmost to stand up to the Mughal emperors from Agra and Delhi. The power and splendor of those times is still evidenced by these remarkable sedan chairs. It was a time of great monarchs on the edge of the Tar Desert. Ever-shifting allegiances were typical of that period and the exquisite furnishings highlight the incredible wealth of the Rajput monarchs. Most of the palace structure consists of sandstone. The complex has accumulated various inner courtyards, terraces and buildings, the result of many centuries of construction and planning. Close to the palace is the grave of this region's monarchs, Jaswan Tada. The shining white walls of this marble pavilion are more like a palace than a grave. Here lies Maharaja Jaswan Singh, who died in 1895. This is also the final resting place of each of Jodhpur's monarchs. The white temples of Ranakpur are the sanctuaries of the Jains, situated in a picturesque valley to the west of the Aravali Mountains, north of Udaipur.
As the slaughter of animals is not permitted by the Jahins, belts and any other animal-related items must be discarded prior to entering the temples. The temples were built around 1500 AD and are one of the finest examples of Indian architecture and stonemasonry. A forest of stone columns supports the domes that are decorated with complex geometrical patterns and godlike images. Between the columns is a glimpse of the sky, a feature that gives the sanctuary a unique atmosphere. It took 60 years for this, one of the most beautiful temple complexes in Rajasthan, to be completed. It's a place of silence and calm. Of all the cities in Rajasthan, Udaipur is the most flamboyant example of regal pomp and splendor. It was the once capital of the Miwa region. But the reason for the establishment of this city had tragic consequences. It was here that Udai Singh retreated when his Chittagar fortress was captured by the Mughal Emperor Akbar. The old town is dominated by a huge city palace that was 300 years in construction and incorporates a variety of architecture. Beyond the tall facades that contain decorated balconies and numerous towers is a large assortment of adjoining buildings. The rooms contain mirrors, glassware and magnificent frescoes that are typical of the majority of Rajput palaces. Next to the city palace, a steep stairway leads up to the Jagdish temple a Vishnu sanctuary, the entrance of which is flanked by two elephants. The stone masonry on the walls is very impressive, as are the Garudas that pull the wagon of Vishnu, the master of the world. The white marble monuments of the Miwa monarchs outside the gates of Udaipur are full of colorful and dramatic history. The Princess Palace, with its well laid out parks, pavilions, lotus ponds and life-size stone elephants is also worth a visit. Close to the city is the Shilpgram Open Air Museum. It contains the original buildings of various regions, still inhabited by several families. Those who live here are delighted to provide an insight into their daily routine and culture. In which music and dance are equally important. 
The princely summer residence amid the artificial Pichola Lake has been transformed into the world-famous Lake Palace Hotel that once served as the luxurious backdrop for a James Bond film. The land of the Maharajas in all its splendor. Temples and marble palaces, imposing fortresses and caravan towns. Rajasthan, a living fairy tale beneath the desert sky. <laughs> 